Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house. It's Wednesday, February 2nd. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Chief Kenneth Gregory has seen a lot of change in 42 years with the St. Louis County Police Department. There's more community outreach, more technology, and more outside pressures. And I think me sitting here is probably one of the biggest changes that this department uh, has ever seen. We will have a conversation with the county's first black police chief in just a few minutes. The winter storm warnings we've been talking about all week are now in effect. The National Weather Service says the notice in St. Louis will last until noon tomorrow. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports roughly a foot of snow could arrive in some areas along with sleet and ice. Meteorologists say people should prepare for treacherous weather and dangerous traveling conditions. Snow will continue through Thursday, and highway officials say the most risky driving conditions could be on Thursday morning. Kevin Deitch is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service in St. Louis. The bottom line up front, this is going to be the biggest winter storm that we've seen probably in a few years. If you remember back to the January 2019 storm, um, we had some snow amounts pushing a foot in the St. Louis metro area, and that's similar to what we're going to see with this storm as well. The Weather Service predicts the areas north of St. Louis along Interstate 70 will likely get the most snow accumulation. Areas south of the metropolitan area are more likely to get ice and sleet. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. There are several closures throughout the region, and Southwest Airlines has suspended all flight operations today at St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Today's other big story comes out of Jefferson City. Missouri's acting health director has resigned after state senators failed to vote on his appointment. As St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Kellogg reports, that lack of action killed the nomination. Governor Mike Parson tapped Donald Karoff in July to serve as the director of the Department of Health and Senior Services. Though Karoff began his job in September, he still needed approval from the Senate to make his position permanent. Because the Senate did not act on Karoff's appointment, he resigned. Parson announced Richard Moore will serve as interim health director. Senate Majority Floor Leader Caleb Rowden said there was doubt whether Karoff had enough support. It came down to, do we have the votes? And do we have the ability to get him done in a, a, a tremendously shortened week? And, and the answer at, at some point became pretty clear that, that uh, the answer probably to both of those questions was no. Karoff had faced accusations he was in favor of mask and vaccine mandates. He said during his hearing that was not true. In Jefferson City, I'm Sarah Kellogg, St. Louis Public Radio. The interim president of Harristow State University says historically black colleges and universities are under threat. That statement from Latonya Colin Smith comes after a bomb threat at Harris Stowe and other HBCUs this week. Harris Stowe deserves better than this. And what we really should be focusing on is how we can work collaboratively together in order to improve our community here in St. Louis. Local law enforcement agents inspected all campus buildings at Harris Stowe before giving the all clear early yesterday afternoon. Arts and Education Council President and CEO Cynthia Prost will step down in July after 14 years of leading the organization. Prost plans to work as a strategic consultant for nonprofits. She founded the St. Louis Jazz and Heritage Festival and also led the St. Louis Art Fair before taking the helm of the council. Prost says it's time for a new leader at the organization. These key leadership roles in our community really should have turnover. But I do feel like organizations like A&E benefit the most when you can attract the next generation and just different thought leaders into the role. The Arts and Education Council Board will lead the search for Prost's successor. St. Louis County Police Chief Kenneth Gregory went to college on a football scholarship to be a teacher but he could not afford the master's degree needed to advance. So he went to the police academy. What started as a job to feed his family turned into a career. Now, 42 years later, Gregory is the department's first black chief, something he told St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman no one would have expected in 1979. I think it's just the, the, the culture that had been established with this department over the years. It just didn't favor uh, minorities being uh, in command positions like this. But over a period of time, you know, that culture has changed. 
And I think it's positive for our department to have realized those changes and have started making moves to, to, to advance or to make those changes visible. And I think me sitting here uh, is probably one of the biggest changes that this department uh, has ever seen. Given that the department is facing multiple discrimination lawsuits over the way promotions and transfers are handled, has the culture changed enough? We're making it more possible for those types of issues to be addressed here before they decide to take it to the court. We've opened up our uh, complaint review procedures, our harassment policy procedures, to where we're giving those people that have issues with this department the opportunity to come and talk with us about whatever those situations may be. I have an open door to discuss any problems. Now, they still may, but we want to give them that opportunity to work it out. What does it mean to be the first black person in department's history to sit in the chair where you are? It means a lot. I'm sure it means a lot to the African-American community here. It shows that there is a cultural change within this department. I think it gives other people that are on this department looking to get to higher positions. I, I think it, they see that it can happen. You have had a long career with the department. What has been the biggest change you have seen in policing over those 40 plus years? There's just more needed police community engagement, you know, uh, that probably wasn't there 42 years ago. We don't want to be out there in, in, in communities that don't trust us. So we're trying to be more transparent and not just us. I mean, all police departments are at that point now where, you know, if we don't have that community engagement, uh, it, we're not doing much for the department, and we're obviously not doing a lot for the citizens if we don't develop those relationships. What are some of the priorities you have for the department in your now role as chief, and have they changed at all since you became acting chief? We have an overall vision for this department, and that is to show ourselves as, as an elite police department to our citizens and to our departments that we deal with. Within that, there are some initiatives that I want to start on this department that's going to help us continue to get to that point. And what are some of those initiatives really quickly that now that you are chief and have this role permanently, you know you'll be able to move on? Okay. I keep saying hiring. And not only am I saying hiring, I, I talk about diversity in our hiring process, career development for our professional staff, our civilians who uh, this department cannot operate without the support that they give us, uh, community engagement. We really, really need to increase our relationship in the community, not with just the citizens, with the clergy in the community. Um, secession planning, um, people moving up within this department to take over positions. That's part of all some of the visions that I've talked about, and I think that I have uh, the staff that works with me to help that get done. I believe that I have 1,300 other people on this department to help us with the succession of some of those things. You have been with this department for a while, and while you may feel young, yeah. you're not young on the calendar. Have you given much thought to how long you maybe would spend in the role that you have right now? This job has gotten a lot tougher. You know, it's gotten a lot tougher. There's a lot involved in it, you know. It's gotten to the point now where you know, if you can put in five years as a police chief on a department this size, you've probably done quite a bit. So um, that's kind of where I am now. You know, I, we mentioned the age 70, but, you know, again, uh, I've just started this and um, I just want to give this a shot for as long as I possibly can. That was St. Louis County Police Chief Kenneth Gregory speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman. And we have a longer version of that conversation posted at stlpr.org. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.